Welcome to another Key State 3 assembly. Thought we'd start off this week with a powerful image. A wonderful example of humanity, where during the protests, people from opposing sides found themselves in a difficult situation. One protester was injured, and despite having opposing views, someone else from a different side came to that man's rescue when he was in need. By carrying that man to safety in the most crucial moment, that to me, shows the way that we need to behave. Violence doesn't solve anything. Aggression doesn't solve anything. Together, we can make a change. As some of you may or may not know, June is the month associated with LGBTQ and more specifically, Pride. We're gonna kick off this week's assembly with the main feature. Good morning, Jerry. Happy Friday. Hi, Olivia. Happy Friday. I'm looking forward to this weekend. Me too. I'm so excited you'll be joining the virtual Pride Parade. You're going to have a blast. Yeah, I'm excited too. This is my first one ever. Really? I had no idea. Yeah, I typically have to travel for work in June and would never get a chance to attend. Oh, that makes sense. Well, I'm happy you get to join now, even if it's virtual this year. Next year, hopefully we can go together. Me too. That reminds me. Why are Pride Parades always in June? I've always wondered. June is LGBTQ Pride Month, of course. This is the month that every year those within the LGBTQ community and allies celebrate the history, progress, and impact that they've had on the world. Every year during the month of June, pride parades are held all over the world. During this time, the different communities are celebrated and the progress that has been made for LGBTQ civil rights are celebrated as well. Okay, right. I understand that. But do you know why it's always in June specifically? Oh, yes, of course I do. Have you heard of the Stonewall Riots? The Stonewall Riots? What is that? So, obviously, things were not as progressive as they are today, and those in the LGBTQ community spent most of their life hiding who they were. Back in the 1950s and 60s, there were very few establishments that would even allow gay people within them, and if they did, it was typically more of an underground bar-type setting. These places were often raided by police solely due to the patrons they had. The Stonewall Riots, what is that? Back in the late 60s, there was a specific bar in New York City. It was called the Stonewall Inn. This was one of the places that was tolerant of the LGBTQ folks and would allow for gatherings of the like. Unfortunately, it too often was raided by the police. But one night in late June of 1969, the guests at the Stonewall Inn had had enough. When the police came barreling through the doors to raid the place, those who were there refused to leave. They spoke up against the police and protested in a way that had never been seen before. The brave customers banded together and the protests lasted all the way through the night and into the morning. As word got around of what was occurring, people in the LGBTQ community flocked to the Stonewall Inn to support their community. These protests sparked activist groups to focus on establishing places for LGBTQ guests in which they could be open about their sexual orientation without fear of being arrested. Okay, but what does that have to do with June? Right. And because of this movement born from the Stonewall Riots, gay rights were on the forefront and progress was made. And the following year, on June 28, 1970, the first gay pride parade took place to commemorate the riots and it's been celebrated every June since. Wow, I had no idea about any of this. That makes so much sense. Of course, Jerry. I'm looking forward to this weekend. People trying to be activists in, so in society. These days, what we really need is active spirituality. Because Bob done fight already. X done fight already. And Rosa Parks make we fly in first class nice and steady. So if you want to go and fight that fight again, then all right. Because after the revolution must come the evolutionary. If you ever see someone protesting and it resembles what was happening in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s and the 60s and the 40s, then, you know what I mean, just with your senses you can know that, yo, we're still in need of something fresh. You know, we're still in need of something that is that cannot be anticipated by the other side the, 
be, be, be easy on yourself, you know, because a lot of compassion needs to be shown. Just know that, yo, every day is an opportunity to, like, learn something new to improve yourself. And as, as tempting as it is to give most of your focus to what's happening in the outside world, there is a world away from social media and whatever that needs love and affection and care. I really hope you enjoyed that feature as much as I did. One thing I really liked about that particular feature was the Chronics um, interview where he spoke about influencing the young generation, building the generation um, for the future and also upskilling and developing their strength. It's really important that you use your time constructively. I hope you're well and keeping safe. I have another experiment for you. For this one, the only thing that you're gonna need is corn flour. So check out home, you probably have some corn flour, you know, just add it to your next shop. And you're gonna need also a little bit of water. So I've mixed around 30 grams of corn flour, and then I've added a couple of drops and stir it all together. And I have a mixture, a little bit like the one that you can see here. So you can see that if I move it really slowly, the corn flour acts as a liquid but if you touch it it feels solid it feels really strong and it feels like a solid so it flows like a liquid really slowly but if you touch it it feels like a solid and I can take it out and if you take it out it will feels like powder like a solid but then when you move it slowly it just acts like a liquid. So my challenge for you is for you to do this experiment at home. Take any pictures and videos and send them to me so I can see how you're getting along. Have a lovely week. Hi everyone, just a reminder that as every week there are competitions on for you to do. Uh, these competitions can win you a £20 voucher and at the end of uh, all of this, there will be a draw and a really big prizes for those who enter. So the more you enter, the better chance you have of winning, even if you don't win every week. So please enter, please look on the website and uh, check out what competition there is this week. learning family leads last week and we discussed how you were doing it was evident that some of you are really really missing school but also evident was how much we missed you let's hear a little bit more from your learning family leads hi 8b miss barry here just um a video to say hi and to say well done um for doing all the work that you're doing and for um, the com you know the really good conversations that we're having. I've really enjoyed bringing each of you each week and catching up and hearing your voices and seeing what you're getting up to. Um, Helene, keep going with the star jumps. Atia, keep going with the dance videos online. That's really great that you're doing that. Shamara, um, love that you're reading Harry Potter now, so we will definitely have to have a Harry Potter quiz when we get back. Um, Alan, well done for getting up earlier each week when I speak to you. Um, Alicia, well done for being so patient when I was trying to explain to you how to get onto the maths quiz. You were so polite with me um, and well done for doing it in the end. And Fat Marta, well, really nice speaking to you each week and you're just so polite and lovely. Um, so I've really enjoyed speaking to each and every one of you and I hope that you're all okay. Hello 7B, I hope you are well. I really miss you and I look forward to and enjoy our phone calls each week. You guys make me laugh and you guys make me so proud of everything that you're doing at home during this time. And it's really weird when I think back to week one of the school closure when some of you could barely utter a word to me over the phone. Well, look how far we've come. Keep up the good work, stay safe and I'll speak to you soon. 
Hi, you late, Miss Fraser here. Just a quick message to tell you I'm very proud of you. Um, very proud of how some of you have been getting on. I can see some of you have been completing your assessments and your work packs, and quite a few of you are doing other things outside of schoolwork. So I'm really proud of you. I want you to keep up the good work and make sure you take some time to get back to things that you like to do reading, playing on the PlayStation. Cough, cough, Mohammed. Um, and I just want to say I miss you guys so much. I miss hearing some of your chirpy, happy voices in the morning, such as Alicia's and Ariana's. And I miss every single person's presence and their aura in my classroom. And we will be reunited soon. So until then, stay happy and stay safe. Bye. Hello Key Stage 3, I want to give a huge shout out to AE, it's been an absolute pleasure um, speaking to you guys every week. Um, one student in particular um, has been consistently working day by day um, on his work packs and also been doing some excellent revision um, after his formative assessments. That student is Azana, well done Azana. I've also challenged Azana um, to be reading the news um, so that next week um, we can discuss it together. So I challenge everyone else to be doing that too. Okay, 7M, a quick message to tell you that I really miss you. Um, those of you that I don't get to speak to all the time because you speak to Miss Rose, hello. Um, and to those of you that I do get to speak to, thank you because it's so lovely to catch up with you each week. You keep me happy. Um, my note of the week, put music on very loudly and dance as much as you can. That's my fitness for the week. I have started running again, I'm really enjoying it. So important to keep physical. It's very hard to be motivated when we're at home for so long. So I've had to give myself a real kick as well and say, come on, get back out there, get fit, get strong. Um, and I really hope that you are all having a good week and I just can't wait to see you all and get you all back to school. So fingers crossed that we get the rules from the government soon and we all see each other, take care. Hi AT, I hope you're all doing well. It's been lovely catching up with some of you and your families over the last couple of weeks and last couple of months. I'm super, super proud of the work that you guys are doing and the effort that you are putting into your activities. Keep it up. I hope to see you soon and keep up the hard work. And on that note, next up we have Assessment Corner. And this week I want you to pay particular attention to the section on how to send emails and also get in contact with your teacher if you are struggling or having problems. Good morning, Key Stage 3, and um, welcome to your assessment corner. This week is assessment week. You are doing phase four assessment. Hey, Key Stage 3, this is Miss Yusuf. I hope you've all been well and keeping safe. During school closure, we've moved on to something called remote learning, which is where we're actually just working um, and learning from home. We've been in contact with our learning family lead, but sometimes we might want to contact another teacher when we need help with our work packs or assessments or other things. I'm going to show you how to use your email to contact your other teachers. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the arcglobe.org website. Now I need to figure out my email address for the teacher that I need to contact. So I can do that by going on uh, COVID-19 closure, secondary, and I'm in year seven for today, so I'm gonna click on year seven. And then this page loads up. Here are my work packs that I've been working really, really hard on. I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna go to online support, and I'm gonna press this button which says here. Here are different teachers and their email addresses depending on which subjects I'm going to need help with. I need help with English today so I'm going to need Mr Pierce's email. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to select his email and I'm going to press copy. I'm going to do that by right clicking and then pressing copy. Because of the way I'm recording that isn't going to come up. Now I'm going to show you how to use your school email to do this um, because that's going to be really really helpful um, in contacting my teachers but also it's the same um, login I use when I log on to the student VLE so I'm going to click the VLE which is right at the top here. I've logged on to the student VLE before so my login details are automatically saved. If I can't remember my login details I'm just going to tell my learning family lead and they'll be able to get that to me. 
So I'm gonna log on, I'm gonna click in and sign in. I'm gonna go to this square at the top here and I'm gonna click on it. And my computer's being a little bit slow, so we're just gonna wait. Lovely. And then I'm gonna click on the app called Outlook. This is the app that I'm gonna need to use with my email. Lovely. At this stage, it might ask you to write in your login details again. It's the exact same email and password that you used for the VLE. So you can just log in and then um, that will take you to the email. Or if you're like me and you've done it before, it will just automatically load um, your email homepage, which looks like this. Okay, yours might not have all of these emails here because I have been receiving emails this is my inbox where I will receive my reply from Mr Pierce. In order to email Mr Pierce, I'm going to click on new message. And again, it might take a while for that to load. Great. Okay, this box has come up and um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write Mr. Pierce's email address. I'm going to paste it onto this box where it says to. Great. Now, this CC here is a function that I can use if this email applies to another teacher who might also um, want to or be able to help me. In this case, if I wanted to, I could see in Miss Oizoy. Okay, because the email is also relevant to her because she is English online support for year seven. But today, I'm not going to email Miss Poison, um, but I might want to do that into the future. This is a very, very important subject line. Okay, this is where I'm going to write down what my email is about in no more than six words. I'm not going to use more than six words. Today, I need help with my English work pack, so I'm going to write that here. This is really important because when Mr. Pierce receives an email, he can see straight away what this email is about. It's about needing help with English work. Now I'm gonna start off by greeting Mr. Pierce the same way I would do if I was walking into his classroom. It's now 1.30 in the afternoon, so the way I would greet Mr. Pierce is good afternoon. Just like I would if I was writing a letter as well, I'm gonna write a comma and I'm gonna go down the subject line. Okay, the subject is quite vague. English, help with English work could mean anything. So I really need to be very, very specific when I'm going to email Mr. Pierce with what I need help with. Today, I'm struggling with my poetry work pack, okay? I'm on lesson number two. I can't figure out if number six is literal or metaphorical. This one's really bugging me, so I'm gonna email Mr. Pierce that I can't tell the difference between them. I am on lesson number two and I can't figure out if quote number six is literal or metaphorical. Please may you explain to me how I can tell the difference. Now that's a very, very specific thing that I need help with. It might be that I don't understand any of these questions, in which case I would also say that to Mr. Pierce. In my explanation of what I need help with, I'm gonna say to him what, how he can actually help me. So please may you explain to me how I can tell the difference. That's a very, very specific and clear question. Okay, so I'm not just gonna say, please help me with my English work pack because there are many, many different things that he can help me with. And to save time, I'm gonna be. Okay, and that's pretty much all I'm gonna write in my email. Now I need to sign off. So I'm going to say many thanks. Then I'm gonna write my name. And then I'm gonna press send. And that's it. That is how you send an email using your school email um, on a computer. Your phone to send an email to your teacher. 
If you don't have a computer or a laptop at home, you might be sending answers to assessments that you've written in your work packs to your teacher. Getting your teacher's email address, English, Maths or Science, is the exact same as I've shown you before going, by going onto the Art Globe website. Now that I've copied the email address of my teacher, I'm going to go to my photos and I've got some pictures of the assessment I've completed that I want to send. I'm then going to click this blue arrow here. After I've clicked this blue arrow, I'm going to press mail. I'm going to paste my teacher's email address onto the to section. I'm now going to write the subject which is completed English assessment and I'm going to greet my teacher the same way I would if they were in their classroom. Good afternoon. Got my message written down and I'm going to sign off by saying many thanks and with my name. And that is how you send a picture to your teacher. Don't worry if you're using a different email address to your school email, it doesn't really matter as long as you manage to get the email across. As you know, we love to celebrate achievement and this assembly is no different. Please enjoy the next section and think to yourself, how can you get yourself featured on next assemblies? The awards section. very exciting news which is to announce the Key Stage 3 champions. Now many of you did very well for phase 3 but there are a few students who've been selected by their teachers as having made particularly excellent progress in those phase 3 assessments. So if we could have a drum roll please from all of you at home we are going to go through those for year 7. Well done to the Year 8 Champions. Huge congratulations to you all. I know many people also got brilliant marks. These are just a few of the great achievements that we've had in Phase 3 and I really, really, really look forward to announcing the Phase 4 Champions. That's it. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of this week's assembly. I hope you enjoyed watching. Until next time, please stay safe.